Sega Forever is a growing collection of classic Sega games that are free to play, according to Sega Forever website. Two years on, I take a look at how the service is doing. Does Sega speed through with sonic speed, or wobble along like Big the Cat? Hmm, let's find out. I'm Melton, on my mission to discover everything great from Sega. So, Sega Forever came out in June 2017 and now features more than 20 classic Sega games that are all free to play, with ad support, on iPhones, iPads and Android devices. I have a look at a handful of these games and the features the service offers. Games available so far include Afterburner Climax, originally in the arcades, Shining Force, Fantasy Star, Sonic 1, Sonic 4, Golden Axe and of course Streets of Rage, amongst others. There's a few gems within the Sega Forever titles and Sonic 2 is one of them. There is no denying that the re-release of Sonic 2 with widescreen support, improved frame rate and additional features created by Christian Whitehead is the best version of Sonic 2 and you can play it for free right now on Sega Forever. As this is a mobile version of the game, you can use the handy on-screen touch controls to control Sonic. It works pretty well and zooming about the levels is just as much of a blast as it always was but attach a compatible controller and change the settings to remove the on-screen controls if they are not removed automatically and you have a much better way to play Sonic. It's actually a pretty decent experience playing the game on a tablet while using a controller or using a controller where the phone fits into a holder at the top of it. I'll go over the controller setup I personally use later in the video. The graphics of this game look even better than the original and it plays great so it's an absolute thumbs up from me. Another great game I tried was Virtua Tennis Challenge, which also works well with a controller. It's a spin-off of the Virtua Tennis games that first appeared in the arcades and on the Dreamcast 20 years ago. The graphics look pretty good and it plays pretty well. You work your way through different matches competing against 50 players across 18 stadiums and you can unleash a super shot which is pretty satisfying. It also has a multiplayer feature where you can play friends over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth but I didn't try that out. So far we've looked at ports of games that have been made especially for mobile, but what of the retro games we were promised? After all, Sega Forever has pictures on the website that suggest they will release games from Sega's first console, the SG-1000, all the way to the Dreamcast. So far out of the 20 or so games we've got, mostly Mega Drive and Genesis games, with a few mobile ports of games from the Dreamcast and arcades, there's certainly no direct emulated ports of any Saturn or Dreamcast games yet, no SG-1000 or Master System games. It would be nice to see some of these in the future. The Mega Drive and Genesis emulation on Sega Forever is fine, it's not perfect by any means and hopefully Sega will continue to make improvements to the emulation, but what we get is okay for what it is. I tested a few different Android devices and mostly things ran well, I think on older mobile phones the experience may vary a bit more. By no means is the emulation as good as some other emulated Sega games available elsewhere like on the Switch or Steam. But let's not forget, these are free to play games. Rystar is one of my favourite games here. I'll put up a link at the top to my Rystar review on Sega Forever and Steam. I mentioned in the review that there's some audio sync issues when I reviewed it, but the last time I played the sound sync was fine. It's a great little game, but I recommend the controller as it's pretty tricky with touchscreen. Things are looking quite good so far for Sega Forever, other than a few small emulation issues, but what about the ads within these games? Thankfully, mostly they are not too obtrusive and they normally only appear between levels and never seem to pop up during the game, and you can skip them after 5 seconds if you want. If you really like a game you can pay a small amount per game to be ad free forever. A few nice features that Sega Forever offers is cloud saves, a rewind feature and leaderboards. Though to be honest a saving function in these old Mega Drive and Genesis games is to be expected with modern day technology. And the rewind feature and leaderboards I wasn't that interested in. So I mentioned earlier that I use a controller for most of the Sega Forever games I play. I should mention that a few games didn't work that great with the controller and I actually preferred the touchscreen controls. You'll still have to use the touchscreen for some things within the menus sometimes. I found it easier than trying to figure out some of the menus using the controller. 
If you plan to connect your phone to the TV and use a controller, the experience isn't as smooth as it could be as you'll still have to use your phone on occasion. I use a pretty cheap Bluetooth controller called a Terius T3, which you can get for less than a tenner. Mine came with this phone holder adapter, which I found an okay experience. There will be better but more expensive controllers available, though this one is okay. I prefer a bigger screen on a tablet though, and it's pretty impressive playing on a screen a lot bigger than a Switch or a Vita. Before I wrap up this video by telling you what I'd like to see from Sega forever going forward, let's have a look at one final game, Crazy Taxi. I've saved this one to the last, as other than the Sonic games, this game has been the most fun out of all the Sega Forever games. This version comes with the updated music tracks from the re-release, which I've muted and replaced with some Sonic music to avoid copyright issues. The game plays well, it's a great port with a high frame rate on newer phones. The way I've captured this footage has brought the frame rate down a little, so trying it for yourself is probably best. It's silky smooth on newer phones and great to play, even without the original soundtrack from The Offspring and Bad Religion. In the future, I think it would be great to see Sega Forever appearing on other devices. Most of the Sega games on Sega Forever are available on other systems, such as Steam and on the Nintendo Switch's Sega Ages collection. Why not combine Sega Forever and Sega Ages into one service? The Sega Ages games ported by M2 are excellent, so that would be the emulation sorted for the most part. I'm not saying that consoles like the Switch should have free to play Sega games with ads, but why have both Sega Forever and Sega Ages? I really think that a Mega Drive Mini with downloadable games in the form of Sega Forever or Ages would be awesome. Give it online services and come up with a way to implement Android to access online games. For what Sega Forever is now, it's good enough and worth checking out if you like mobile gaming. It's a good way to try out games you've never played before, if you can get around the obvious issues with touchscreen controls and small screens. Ultimately, it can't compare to playing a game on a console on your TV, but it's good for on the go if you don't already have a handheld with your favourite Sega games on it. For the most part, I'll be sticking with my Vita for portable gaming, which also has Sonic and Crazy Taxi on it, and I'll use Sega Forever for some of the games I don't already have. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to join me on my mission to discover everything great from Sega, hit that subscribe and bell icon. Until next time, this is Melton, your friendly monster gamer, signing off.